So, remember how I said I have trouble sleeping the night before a dive trip? The beauty of a multi-day trip is it will put you to sleep for the next night. So that was really fun. And then we stayed up way too late talking. <laughs> we were just running around like crazy that, that day. Tons of diving and then cooking and everything else. And the next morning, we got up pretty early um, to go with a friend of ours, um, Matt with Blue Tuna, out to the Channel Islands. And we got to do some diving there, um, which was kind of a dream come true for me because uh, you and Matt are just wonderful people to dive with. And I was really glad that the three of us got to dive together while I was in town for such a short period of time. Limits of scallops. Um, our buddy Cody on that trip um, got limits of lobster, and Matt got a nice calico. So it was just a very chill, beautiful day. Um, we got back that night, and um, he made this really good Thai salad with the scallops that were kind of done mochiko style. Um, I mean, it's not actual mochiko flour, but it was rice flour, and so I'm just going to call it that because I really like chico. So yeah, scallops. The first night when we were getting into camp, Alyssa and I decided to stop by the store and pick up a few ingredients for the lobster tomka on the first night. Um, I kind of made a snap decision that I would fry the scallops in some way and just do like a basic Thai style salad. Uh, specifically kind of a yam or mixed style salad um, with some clear Japanese influences. Uh, I'm basically matchsticking some daikon for the main ingredient. I'm chopping up some basil to add in for some extra depth and flavor. And then I would say, in equal proportion to the daikon, I'm adding a bunch of mango. I would say this dish even kind of harkens a little bit to a mango sticky rice if you take away the sugar and the rice and the coconut milk and, you know, basically all the things that make mango sticky rice good. You know what? Never mind. This is nothing like mango sticky rice. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do when I'm cutting up fruit is kind of pretend I'm filleting fish and seeing just how close to the rind I can get when I'm cutting away the meat. In lieu of Thai chilies, I went for some thinly sliced serrano. Juicing some lime for dressing. And then we're going to make I guess a weird approximation of beer batter with some rice flour. In this case, we were kind of working with what we had on hand. Whenever you're battering to fry and you're using rice flour, you typically want something to kind of gum it up a little bit, uh, like cornstarch, for instance. You can see here, it just kind of makes for a rather coarse mix if you're not using something like wheat flour, which already has the structure to make a much gluier kind of mix. Nevertheless, I was pretty happy with the way it came out. Uh, you'll see here, Alyssa was just kind of awesome as a prep chef. Uh, she cleaned up all the scallops for this meal and got them all set up for me. 
So from here, we are battering and frying in a cast iron skillet with some high smoke point, I believe sunflower oil. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about with the rice flour batter here. Um, it doesn't get the best coverage that I would like, although I would still say it turned out pretty damn good. With the scallops fried up, I'm just kind of assembling the salad now. Um, I'm adding some lime juice as well as some rice wine vinegar and just a little bit of fish sauce. And then I plate. One thing that kind of stuck in my head from the day, uh, from our various conversations, was something Matt said. He referred to uh, this kind of hunting as scallop therapy, which definitely resonated with me because whenever you're going out to the islands in Southern California, there's this sense of excitement and possibility that comes with it. This was kind of a late season trip and the water temperatures had already dropped. So there was something that just felt kind of nice and relaxing about adjusting our expectations to you know not really seeing a ton of bait in the water when we got out there and really just kind of taking it easy appropriate to being an october dive trip this very much felt like harvesting i think it also helps when you feel a sense of shared values among the people with whom you're diving it just makes the day that much less pressure. Blah, 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 journey, blah, 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 destination. <laughs> this was a really wonderful day, and I felt really lucky to be invited along. This is definitely one of those days I'll remember for making new friends and just having a really wonderful time. I was a little worried that because I was only going to be in Southern California for a few days that I was going to feel this urgency to like get something really good um, spearfishing wise, but I just was enjoying it so much and I was enjoying the company and I don't know, maybe I'm finally getting out of that um, new spearfisher phase where you're just decimating reefs and shooting tons of fish. And I'm in that selective phase now a little bit more. Um, but it was just, I, I wouldn't have changed anything. I think it was, well, except for um, having uh, more time. <laughs>